Hey guys, Scott here. So I had a video uh, go go kind of viral, not really, but got a little bit more attention than normal, talking about just the realization. And obviously, we knew this, and and, and people aren't surprised, but this this suddenly hitting us that when living abroad, living in in Nicaragua, um, the thing that happened was I, I had an employee, and he came and he said, "I need I don't know 500 cord for something, right?" and when I lived in the United States, every time someone would ask for money, if someone said, uh, what's this going to cost? I, I'm going to run to the store and do this thing for you. Oh, how much is that thing? That's ah, $100. Okay, you got to give them 150 right? There's all these ancillary costs. There's going to be taxes. There's going to be taxes you can't predict. There's going to be fees. There's probably a tip involved. There's, like, there's just always something. There's always something extra. And it never goes away. And it's really weird, right? Um, and when you think of it, and when you move abroad, you, you're, you're often like, wait, this, this doesn't happen other places. I get asked, is it, well, how much does this thing cost? 500 cord. That means I can just give you 500 cord. I don't have to give you this big buffer amount of money to cover all the things that we don't know how much they're going to be, or it's not listed, right? Maybe we know if, we, if it's a place we go to all the time. And uh, it's just a great feeling. And of course, the whole world's this way. It's just coming from the U.S. and Canada that you suddenly have this like, oh, I can't predict my prices feeling, but they're big places. And so if you grow up in the United States, that may actually seem normal. You may not realize that that's a really abnormal thing and really bad, right, for a lot of reasons. But a number of people jumped on. And a lot of people are just like, yep, that's crazy. I can't believe the U.S. does that. But some people tried to explain in a common way why the U.S. does this. And I thought it was worth addressing. And the reason that people give is that the United States is full of jurisdictions. So first of all, there's no excuse for all these jurisdictions. That makes no sense. Right. But I understand states are sovereign, but is my county sovereign? Is my village sovereign? Is my hotel sovereign? All those things have unique, unique taxes. So that there are sovereign states is not the issue. Right. But so there's, there's all these sovereign zones and they all have different taxes. There's millions of tax jurisdictions inside the United States. That's the first problem. That's unacceptable. Right. That is just stupid. That is so anti-commerce um, because no one knows where they live, right? For those who don't live in America, one of the things that's a really powerful tool in the United States is that people don't know what jurisdiction they live in. And there's not always something that tells you. You have to go through potentially quite a lot of work and things that people don't understand to figure out where you live, especially if you ever move like to another state. But for example, I grew up in Wyoming County, New York, in the town of Covington. We didn't have a post office, so my post office said I was in the town of Pavilion in the county of Genesee. I went to high school in York, in the township of York, but not in the village. In the, uh, the, the village area was something else, was Gregsville, and the county was Livingston. So just in my day-to-day -day life, I had three political jurisdictions by county and three or four by town and one or two by village and one by post office that didn't match any of those and uh, just this really complicated thing to figure out at any given moment of the day what jurisdiction applied to me. So just in getting the mail and going to school on any given day, I would have to know between three and six different tax jurisdictions. That's not insurmountable, but growing up there, that's a little bit confusing. But if you were to move there and have no one tell you for sure what town or county you live in, <coughs> you, you can end up in a situation where you literally don't know to whom to pay your taxes because you like, like property taxes, because you can't necessarily figure anything out. When I lived in Texas, I lived on the north side of Dallas. I lived in the city of Carrollton. But the city of Carrollton was in two counties. I didn't live in Dallas County, which most people in Carrollton did. I lived in Denton County. But I didn't live in the city of Denton. So I have to deal with the municipality of Carrollton. With the, and, and, like, there's all these dividing lines. So there's four different political and tax jurisdictions for my town. And nobody, literally nobody, knew exactly where the lines were. This is something that I take great interest in, and I had a fair idea of where the lines are. I knew that it was about this road, but it was, it was it this side of the road and that side of the road, or everyone on this road fell to one side and the people behind them. Like, we don't know, and nothing tells you, right? There's no way to know absolutely for certain without getting, like, a surveyor. This is, like, really crazy. So the idea 
that the U.S. has these jurisdictions and that, you know, everybody needs these different things doesn't really make sense when you have this problem that no one can tell where they are. And I know because I had my best friend moved into an apartment. They promised her it was in one jurisdiction. Once she was in the apartment and had some legal hassles because someone had robbed her, then it turned out she was not in that jurisdiction and she had different, she couldn't go to the police that were nearby. She couldn't get resources that were nearby. She had to go really, really far away because she was in a little tiny spot that had been annexed by a different city, but everyone lied about it until you had to deal with something and they wouldn't respond. So you couldn't, she had literally no right to know short of hiring a surveyor at great cost and, and going through public records to find out what police, taxes, laws applied to her. And in the U.S., you have these problems that like, um, uh, is it legal to uh, play a stereo above a certain volume? In one city, yes. In one city, no. How, do you, well, how much do you pay in taxes? X amount here, X amount there. Can you um, live with a family member long-term in an apartment? This town, yes. This town, no. Can you drink at home in this town, yes. In this town, no. Knowing what town you're in is absolutely critical because the laws as to just normal civil life are so vastly different from town to town. I grew up in a dry town, but I went to school and got my mail from wet towns, right? So like what was legal and what wasn't just within going, riding the school bus to school changed a lot, but you had to know which house fell in which zone. And it's always a requirement for Americans to know that, but they don't have a means of knowing that. So having anything, laws or taxes, that vary based on things that people cannot identify is fundamentally corruption, right? There's no way around it. That's why it exists. It exists because they want to confuse people and use it to trick people. So people who, uh, who don't have the financial resources to find out which advantages and powers they have uh, are at a major disadvantage and have no way to protect themselves or know what they're not allowed to do. So, for example, uh, if you knew what town you were living in, you would know what you were allowed to do and what you could uh, uh, hold other people accountable for. Oh, my neighbor's making a lot of noise. Well, I was told I lived in this place. I have no, no sound ordinances to protect me. But I actually live in this other place, and I do have that, but I didn't know about it because I was told I was in a different jurisdiction. You have to know those things in order for the laws to exist for you. So hiding that, having a system where that is how the dividing works, uh, uh, fundamentally doesn't work. And, and we see that constantly in the United States, right? Living there, people don't talk about this that much, but it is a nonstop problem and it is not serving a function except to make it easier for the rich to be richer. The poor are never really in a position of being absolutely certain of which jurisdiction they're in. And this could be just you're walking to your neighbor's house. There could be a, a line that, that divides there. You're heading to school. Maybe your school's in it. And you don't always have choice, right? People say, well, you, you choose where you live, but you don't. You live where you're born 99% of the time. And that where you're born sends you to a school in a completely different jurisdiction is not something you generally have any say over or extremely little for most people, none. And so you don't necessarily have any control of jurisdictions. And so people who control those dividing lines kind of control everything. But the argument is made by several people that these complex lines make it so that stores and businesses can't practically figure out the prices to put on things. So they're forced to put a base price and then charge all the taxes and fees on top of that as a surprise later. So there's a couple problems with this. So a lot of people wrote in and said, you know, the US, U.S. just has all these jurisdictions. It's not a problem. You just have to know where you are. Well, how can you expect a person who cannot figure out exactly where they are to have this information to know, right? Because everyone's like, it's just, it, people wrote in and said, it's this much tax. Well, they got a number wrong for every place I've ever been. I've never seen a place in the U.S. with that particular tax rate. More, less, yes, never that one. I'm sure that it, it's real. It's just he's picking a very specific spot that applies to no one else. So it kind of proves my point. So the issue is, right, the claim is that the people who own businesses, so you own a pharmacy, you own a clothing store, you own a shopping center, and you put it on a place and you're getting the real estate, you have all this time, you've gone in and you want to set prices, and it's too complex. And so you are dealing with, uh, you, you don't know what the prices are going to be, so you just set this base price and you let the cashiers figure out at the last second what the taxes and all that is going to be. Well, if you can't figure that out 
as a business owner who, who let's be clear, one, is a mandate to understand your pricing and your tax base and has to train the cashier on this, right? You're legally obligated to do this. It's like, it's not just a moral mandate, which obviously you have. You also have that to your customers to tell them what the taxes are. But you have this absolute legal mandate that you must oversee, check, and educate your cashiers and anyone who's going to be calculating prices as to what this is. You must also have computer systems. Under normal circumstances, you are allowed to do this without computers, but practically, you have to have computer systems that will calculate these things because sometimes they're complex and you have to deal with that. So you have all this stuff and you have to record it. You have to turn in the money. It's a lot. You have to do these things, right? I'm an American businessman. I have to do these things. And I can tell you, it's drop dead simple. Anybody who's struggling with this as a business owner is brain dead and is just lying to you, right? There is no such thing as a business person who has ever struggled more than a cashier to do this, right? So the supposition here is that business owners who have access to know all the things you need to know about taxes, who have a mandate and a legal requirement to know all these things about taxes, who have the um, information needed for everything, they know what types of products they're selling, they have access to lawyers to check, they have access to accountants to check should they need to, because they have to, legally mandated. You have to have these resources. You are not allowed to sell a product without knowing where you are, what it is, what it's tax based. These are things you have to do to legally be in business. So unless you're talking about criminal enterprises, they have all this information, right? So they have all that. They know exactly what jurisdiction they're in, all these things, they have to. And what we're supposedly claiming and I know people just aren't thinking about this and they're just being told, right, some, somebody trying to make excuses for bad American business has told them this and they're repeating it and they're not critically thinking about it. So I totally understand no one's trying to scam me or anything here. No one's trying to come up with a weird thing. But I want to make sure that people understand what it is they're saying when they say that the business that has machines that put prices on everything, that decides what the price should be, that compares to other places, businesses that might be doing things like Amazon and Starbucks and having complex algorithms that determine individual pricing per customer, the level of complexity that goes into pricing is, is potentially so high, the legal requirements are so high, and saying, but they can't, they can't figure out how to put that number onto the piece of paper that's there, but the cashier who makes minimum wage does not have access to the lawyer, does not have access to the CPA, does not have access to information about the jurisdiction necessarily, doesn't have access to the tax law, doesn't have a, a say in how things are going to be categorized and so forth, that that minimum wage teenager should have absolutely no problem in figuring out what the taxes should be. And the shopper who also has no say in any of those things and little to no legal capability to figure out what jurisdiction is going to be, what taxes are going to be, or how it applies to different things, that those people should be able to just know what the price is going to be and apply it appropriately when the business owner whose job it is to do those things supposedly can't. That is such a wild claim. Right? That doesn't make any sense at all. As a business owner, if I wanted to make things easier for my business, I would simply make a single price. Then you're able to like take cash, for example. One of the reasons that cashiers struggle so much in the United States is because not only do they have to take cash, not that often anymore, right? But traditionally, you had to take cash, but you also had to figure out change on wacky amounts. Because in most places, like Nicaragua, things tend to be priced in even Cordobas. You're going to pay 10 Cordoba, 20 Cordoba, 50 Cordoba, 100 Cordoba, 150 Cordoba, 500 Cordoba, things you can easily just hand bills and go, right? If it's a tiny, tiny, tiny thing, yes. Oh, that's one Cordoba. Okay, here's a coin, right? But under normal circumstances, we're going to be dealing with even amounts. So the idea that you have to make any kind of change is, is very little, right? Oh, yes, this was 150. All I had was a 200. Okay, I just give you back a 50. It's so easy. But in the United States, quite often, if you're dealing with cash, something's going to be like, okay, this is $100. You're like, excellent, here's my $100. And then they're like, oh, well, no, it's actually $107.50. Well, I'm not carrying $750. At best, I'm carrying $120, right? And now it's $100. And now I have to get, first of all, I have to carry an arbitrary amount of money more than the thing I'm buying. But I know that, so you get used to it. But how much more? Sometimes that taxes. 
4%. Sometimes it's 8%. Sometimes it's 17%. And that's real. There are, I've worked in places where the things we sold had 17% tax. And, and sometimes they have fees. And those fees could be who knows what percentage. So you already have this complex number that no one's completely sure what it is. And everyone taxes differently, not necessarily legally, but they do. And so that's another thing. Consumers don't know when the taxes are going to be legal or not. They have no way to know. And then that change that you have to make is that extra step. Now, none of this is super hard on its own. But as soon as we say it's not super hard, one has to wonder, how is someone in business and has access to lawyers and accountants and can't put it on the product in the first place? It's not a viable excuse. Now, the second piece is that the claim is that the United States is full of these tiny jurisdictions. States are sovereign. Yes, of course, we know this. Should states have the right to have individual state taxes on, on, in, on, on um, sales tax? Maybe. That's a big maybe. But states are big entities. Right, so, okay, so let's talk about this. The logic was, the example we gave is that Nicaragua doesn't have this problem. Well, Nicaragua is about the size of Mississippi, smaller than most U.S. states. So Nicaragua, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, Costa Rica, quite a bit smaller than Nicaragua. Panama, way smaller than, uh, than, than Costa Rica. Uruguay, all these tiny little places that are smaller than nearly all American states. Well, they're also sovereign and do this and have no problem at all. So now the question is, why do so many Americans believe, come up with whatever supposition you want, why do so many Americans believe that American business owners don't have the simple mathematical capability that every country in the world that is smaller and mostly poorer, it's very rare to find a small country that comes close to the U.S. in, in per capita income, and, and very few that have access to the educational resources, and very few that have access to the computers and, and calculators. I mean, everybody's got access to them, right? But no one has more access than Americans. How is it that Americans struggle so much as business owners to figure out their taxes, when if you were to say the same thing in Nicaragua, government officials would look at you like you had lost your mind. Oh, this person started a business, but they don't know how to pay taxes from an object. What? It's a flat tax rate for your entire jurisdiction. How big is your jurisdiction in Nicaragua? Well, the size of one medium, so well, no, it's quite large. One large city in Texas. Now in Texas, that city may have 20 different tax jurisdictions. I understand that, but all the more reason that the business needs to do it. It doesn't make sense to push it off to someone else, but it also, all the arguments fall down when you actually look at them. There's no logic to why it's done this way, except it is to confuse the buyer into thinking things are cheaper than it is so, and you see this constantly, Americans do price comparisons against other places and say, our price is this, I pay $3, they pay $3.50. And you say, well, no, you pay three plus tax. Their three fifty already has the tax in it. They don't look at that. They look at the sticker price. Now, not many people are shopping between countries like that, so it doesn't normally affect people. But if you were to do this, if you as a business owner, if I as a business owner were to suddenly do this, People would say your prices are higher because they will always assume that there's hidden fees because America allows hidden fees. Hidden taxes, secret taxes, secret fees, they allow you to charge without agreement for services that have already had a separate agreed upon price. That means that they've basically guaranteed everyone has to do it by law. It's not exactly by law, but effectively by law. As long as you have a capitalist system that rewards better pricing for the same product, then if you allow someone to lie about that price, you force everyone to lie about that price. That is how it works. And when the government says, that's not lying, that's just how we do it, what are you supposed to do? And so this is a situation where all other countries just have laws that say you're not allowed to fake the price like that. And it's all very simple. But in the United States, that you could literally, and this is one of the things they're talking about now, they're allowed to, in some, not in all states, but some states allow, like you go to a restaurant, they can just add fees. Not fees you agree to. You go to the menu, you see the prices, I'd like these things. Nowhere are there additional fees listed. No one has notified you. You agree to a price, you eat the food, and then when the bill comes, okay, we understand Everybody does the tax thing. That is a universally accepted bit of corruption in the United States. We're all, we're all on board. There's no way around it. You have to tip on top of that. Okay, 
We all know that there's going to be tipping. These are predictable things, even if you don't know the exact tax rate, even if you don't know exactly what local preferred tips are going to be, because some places I've lived, it's been 25%, some places mandate 18, some places still talk about 15, well, but that was a long time ago, probably not anymore. And, and it's, it's relatively straightforward, relatively. You still have very little capability to calculate. It's all very complex. Mo most people, they can't split bills. Most people can't figure out taxes. Most people can't figure out tips. Normal people struggle with this stuff, right? So, so the idea that you're not rolling it in, you can say anything you want. Normal people can't do this. The average person can't exactly figure out what things are going to cost. It's just beyond them, right? We know this from just everyone knows this. So trying to put it on them and be like, haha, society is just mathematically out of your reach uh, for going to restaurants, for shopping at the grocery store, for buying anything. That's not a good process. But even with all that, now there are many jurisdictions that allow unagreed to costs to be added to the bill. Oh, oh, the menu cost was only for the table that you're sitting at. The actual cost of the food, the waiter, the cook, the energy, the air conditioning, all those things that you used while you were here, those are extra. We're going to add them to the bill. I, so what was the price on the, on the menu for? Oh, that was for, um, uh, right, it's fake pricing at this point. Now they're allowed to give you one price, charge you another, and then layer these things on top. There's, there's no connection. And this is the thing. It's become American culture to the point where lots of people will jump in and try to rationalize it that fake pricing is like a thing. Like, no, 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 fake pricing. No, that's totally, you should have no way to predict what your end price would be. That's crazy. Why would consumers be able to use price comparisons? And so, of course, restaurants that steal like this are going to do better because People don't know that they're doing that. How do you identify which restaurant is going to have secret pricing at the end? You can't do price comparisons. And that means we don't have a capitalist system, right? Capitalism depends on a free market, depends on open pricing. If you don't have open pricing, if you can't price compare, then you have no way to select what it is you're going to get. It's the same as saying you can't select which thing you're going to get. Oh, I went to this restaurant. I was hoping to get a hamburger. I got chicken wings. Oh, did you order chicken wings? You, you just order one thing and then they give you whatever they have. That's just how it works. Well, and what did you pay for? Well, you just pay an amount that they say it's not tied to what you ordered. What? So, and all restaurants do this? Yes, it's just completely random. You go into any place and they do anything they want and charge you anything they want. What? You have no ability to choose the product, no, no ability to compete on price, no ability to compete on quality, because none of those things are things you can predict ahead of time. And so it's completely, the, the degree when you move out of the United States, one of the things that just blows your mind is discovering what free markets are like and just how much the United States may be the least free market that I've ever encountered. I've never lived any place, I've never visited any place where all of the information is so obscured so you never know how to compare things one place to another. You are, you are literally in an anti-free market. It is it's so not free. It's, it's just insane. But they have to keep talking about free markets. The rest of the world just has free markets. They never have to talk about it because it's just how the world works, right? You can't realistically have unfree markets. People just won't put up with it except in the United States where for some reason it's become this mantra of calling an anti-free market a free market and people taking great pride in the fact that the numbers just don't work. But at the end of the day, the argument that the jurisdictions, which are absolutely huge, right, California, which is bigger than Canada, is unable to have the prices included because it's too complicated for a Californian business owner to know his taxes but it's not too complicated for the cashier or the consumer to know those taxes when he has the mandate and capability to know, and they do not have the mandate or the capability to know. Just nonsensical. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.